Peter Levels is making two to three million dollars a year from a collection of internet businesses. He owns 100%, so has total control. He lives wherever he wants, and he has virtually no employees. I'm fascinated by this guy. He's an independent thinker who's not afraid to challenge accepted norms. Today, I want to talk about Peter's philosophy of running lean, profitable businesses. His thoughts on tech stack, his thoughts on venture capital, and how he finds business ideas. Now, Peter goes by Levels or Levels IO on the internet. So I might switch between calling him Levels or Peter in this video. He runs a number of businesses. The most notable are Nomad List, a community for remote workers, Remote OK, a job board for remote workers, Photo AI, a site which generates photorealistic images using AI, and Interior AI, which is an AI interior design tool. First up, I want to talk about the number of people Levels employs. It's virtually zero. His levels explaining his setup. Yeah, so I have one customer support contractor part-time, uh, Isabel, and she works for all my projects. Um, and I have a, a moderator for the Slack group because the Slack groups, they, there's some drama in there. Like I've had some crazy drama in these Slack groups in communities. So you need to have a moderator, you need to have rules and you need to have a, you cannot just automate this moderation away. Like I tried that, but you need a real person there to you know check on messages and stuff. Um, and then I have a DevOps uh, guy, he's my best friend, Daniel, and he uh, works kind of like a SLA, SLA, like a service level agreement where if the server goes down, he gets a message. You know, if I'm sleeping or something, he brings it back up. But the problem is it never goes down anymore. Like it doesn't, we haven't really had that for years. So um, he does security updates and stuff, you know, like, because I have a VPS. I don't use Amazon. I use a VPS on DigitalOcean and Linode. Um, and he kind of keeps that stuff safe, you know, so. That's good. That's incredible to be able to run multiple businesses with millions of dollars in revenue with so few employees. I believe Peter's now hired some engineers to help with his AI startups, but still it highlights a trend we're seeing. The internet enables solopreneurs and uh, very lean businesses with few employees. Levels wrote a blog post about this, which I love. It's called A Future of Two Extremes. In it, he argues that the economy will have a few mega corporations which control infrastructure and technology and on the other side there'll be micro businesses which provide creative products and services on that infrastructure here's a quote from that post so the future is a dichotomy dichotomy that's a jargon word for two polar extremes on the one side you have mega corporations controlling infrastructure and on the other side billions of individuals making stuff on top of that infrastructure what's left in the middle well, not much. Say goodbye to medium and big businesses. Very interesting stuff. And one thing I noted reading that post, he wrote it in 2015 and predicted that Apple would soon be a trillion dollar company. Well, in 2023, Apple has a market cap of 2.6 trillion. Crazy. Next, I want to talk about Peter's choice of technology. It's an interesting counter case for me because I come from a traditional software engineering background, so I'm inclined to follow best practices. The first time I tried to build a product was back in 2014. I was very proud to build and host it using Docker on AWS. And this was many years ago when Docker was a new technology. I spent a lot of time on this because I was trailblazing, yet the infrastructure didn't contribute anything to the product. In fact, it made me slower because my infrastructure was overly complicated and my time was spent there instead of shipping features that my users cared about. Peter thinks that cutting edge technology is not an advantage. In fact, it slows you down. Here's a great clip from his recent interview on the Bootstrap Founders podcast. But I think it's more about a meme. It's, 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 more, it's not about PHP or jQuery. It's more about the point that it doesn't matter, that you have these developers who work in enterprise in agencies. And there's this agency, MLM, I feel like, where... Um, <laughs> you have a you have a company that doesn't know anything about tech. They come to a web agency and they want like a website or app and stuff. And these web agencies need to sell like the best stuff. So they say we use a, the newest technology, like we use some big framework new, and they need to um, they use it as a sales thing. And then these developers need to update their skills to uh, use this technology. Um, 
and this is like a cycle and it's a whole economy because you have this ecosystem of like frameworks now get funded and they have evangelists and like big companies like Versal. I like Versal, but they are very, that's a big example. They, um, they have evangelists who make developers promote the stuff all the time and they work for them. That's the whole thing. And they're VC funded and they need growth and all good. But this makes new developers think that they need all this technology to make stuff. And in, this technology is nice, but in many ways, a lot of the new technology is, uh, makes things more complicated often. And there's a thing called, I think Taleb, Nassim Taleb always talks about Lindy effect where all technology um, is proven because it just works because it's old, right? Like PHP is very old, it just works. New technology, you need to be a little bit distrustful of because it often breaks. Like, man, I have this when you buy like smart home stuff, like I go in an Airbnb and there's some some smart TV or something, you know? And it's so difficult to watch TV now. And this is kind of Lindy effect. Like an old TV just works. It shows you TV and it's tested, you know? Yeah. So I think that's my whole point of this. Like, it doesn't matter what you use. There's no need for this cultism with developers. Um, if you are a, a entrepreneur, you know, it's all about like, if you're a developer for AC, sure. But if you're an entrepreneur, the problem is a lot of these developers that work as freelancers, they want to be an entrepreneur. So they bring this whole bagage, this baggage of having to use this stack and over engineering and wow, this code is so, uh, elegant and stuff to, uh, uh, something where the priority should be getting customers and getting people yeah. to pay money because then you survive, you know, you pay your rent. Levels doesn't like VC. For the majority of cases, Levels advises people to start small and grow without external funding. Here are his two main arguments. VCs benefit from diversification at the expense of the founder. Founders are expected to go all in for very low likelihood of success. Here's what Peter tweeted. Raising VC as a founder means you become a casino chip to a gambler. You'll be one of the thousands of other founders that they're betting on. The entire model requires 95% not to succeed because they want outsized returns. Less than 5% exit for lots of money, making a 10 to 100x return and the rest fail. Important to understand you'll spend five years of your life being just a casino chip and that you're not special. A second point is that even if they do succeed, financial rewards are often much lower than you'd expect due to dilution. Is what he says about this. Imagine having four founders at a VC funded startup selling for $100 million, diluted to 10% ownership by VCs, uh, 50% tax. You go home with 1.25 million cash after six years working seven days a week, 12 hours a day. That works out to $47 an hour. And he points out that many people on Upwork make more than that. Lastly, I want to talk about how Levels finds business ideas and why I find him so fascinating. He's always early to jump on new trends. His first big success was Nomad List, which he was in a position to start because he was early to the Nomad lifestyle scene. More recently, he jumped on the AI hype train and very quickly built something to harness AI's power for profit. Peter jumps on trends, moves fast and discards things that don't work. I remember seeing him start streaming on Twitch in 2021. He tried it for a while, monetized it a little bit, and then decided that it wasn't worth it and moved on. He's always doing these mini experiments, trying new things to see what works. Here's a clip from several years ago where he explains how to find business ideas by working on the fringes. The problem is we all have the same ideas. Like this idea keeps coming up every, every year. Like someone's like, we should make an app where you can find your friends and then it's amazing. You know, Apple now already has it. Um, everybody already did that. Uh, people want to make photo apps. You know, this is another photo app that just released last month. It's just, we don't need another photo app. Uh, more food delivery, like kimchi food delivery. Great, cool, man. There's more food delivery. We don't need any of that. You know, so everybody has the same problems. So everybody has the same ideas. And that's a big, that's a big issue. So you need to become a more original person. And how to do that? Well, go travel is the easiest way to become a more unique person. You'll get into um, new cultures, you meet new people, and they all have different problems, and you become a more different person. You know that when you come back from travel, you always feel different because you became different. You're outside Dutch culture. Uh, work on stuff that's on the fringe. So, you know, the background says polyamory. That's like, you know, relationships are changing right now, and this is a very fringy subject. Like, people are talking about polygamy, polyamory. It's taboo to talk about it, and that's 
amazing because then you're early. You can be ahead of other people by making a startup about something that's you know very early on yet. Nomad stuff was very fringe when I was doing it in 2013. Nobody was traveling and working. It was just it was very, very niche. Lastly, I want to leave you with this. A clip from My First Million where Peter explains if you feel at odds with society, you might just be ahead of the curve. I'm like user zero. I try to build stuff for myself. And I always have like, I have like new ideas. Like there's just like you said, Red Pill, there's like something, there's a discongruence in society and what I'm thinking. And most people then think like, okay, there must be wrong, something, there must be something wrong with me. But I think like arrogant, <laughs> I think there must be something wrong with society. Maybe this is like a new thing. So I'll try and make a little website about it.